Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So it's been a while for me, sorry I've been pretty busy, but let's today solve leak code 42, trapping rainwater. So we're given an integer array representing the heights of certain elevations or whatever, right? So it's a one dimensional array. The first value is zero, meaning a height of zero. So that's over here. The next value is one. So that means a height of one. Some have heights of two. This one has a height of two. This one has a height of three, right? And so given this entire structure, we basically want to know how, like what's the maximum amount of rainwater could this structure trap, right? Given an unlimited amount of rain. So you can see this is one unit right over here. This is roughly four units, right? One, two, three, four. And then this is another one, right? So when you count all of those, you get a total of six squares, right? So the output is six. This can trap a maximum of six blocks of water. So with a picture, it's pretty easy, but what? how do you know, right? Like what's the algorithm to determine how much each position could trap, right? Like. For example, this position is the first one, right? So there's no boundary on the left of it, right? So no matter how much water we would add over here, it would all just spill to the left. And the same is true for this position, right? No matter how much water we put on top of here, even though there's a right boundary over here, right? There's nothing on the left of it. So all the water is just gonna spill out to the left. So it's not gonna trap any water. But you can see in the third position, we are able to trap exactly one block of water. So what's the algorithm to determine why is it one, right? Because we care about the height because we wanna know how much water. And it's actually pretty simple, right? Take a look. So here we have one block of water, what if I added a second block of water? Well, we can see that there is a boundary on the right. This is good, right? But what about the left side? There's no boundary over here, right? Meaning any water I add is just gonna spill out. The boundary only has a height of one. So we're seeing that the height on the left is one, the height on the right is two. So we're, we need to take the minimum of that. We need to take the minimum of one and two because that is our bottleneck. That is what's determining exactly how much water we are able to trap per position, right? For every single position, we need the max height on the left and the max height on the right, left and right, and then we need to take the minimum of those two. Let's take a look at this position. Clearly we can't trap any water here, but why exactly is that the case? Well, when you look at the right position, right, in the entire right section, the maximum height is a three, right? So that's good, three here. What's the maximum height on the left side? It's a one, right? This position is a two. If we take the minimum of one and three, we get one. So that's our boundary. That doesn't mean we can trap any water here. We can trap zero water here. The reason is because the actual calculation is we're gonna take the minimum. We're gonna take the minimum of the maximum left height and the maximum right height. We're gonna take the minimum of those two and we're gonna take the height that we're currently at, right? So let's say H of the index i that we're at. So this is the equation we're gonna to use to determine at every single position i, let's say this is our i position, right? So you can see i is in this equation. This is gonna determine how much water we can trap in position i. So we know the minimum of the max of the left and right, right? Because the left was one, the right was three, the minimum of those is just gonna be one. And h of i, so the height at position i is two over here, right? Two. So we're going to take one minus two. That's actually going to give us a negative number, right? That's going to give us negative one, but we know we can't trap negative water, right? So we're always going to round up. We're never going to use negative numbers because it doesn't really make sense to trap negative water over here. So really, since the solution is negative, that really means that we can trap zero water in this position. But let's just move to a couple more positions before you probably get the idea. So over here, right in this position, the height is one, right? And the max height on the left is two, the max height on the right is three again, right? So we take the minimum of two and three, so we're gonna get two, right? Two is the minimum, 
and height of i is one, right? The height at this position is one. So that means we can trap exactly one water in this position, right? Clearly that is the case, right? We're trapping one unit of water. And basically, if you did this exact same calculation for every single position, including this position, you'd get the appropriate water count. So this position would give us two units of water. This is going to give us one. These are going to give us zero. This is going to give us one. And the rest are going to give us zero water that we can trap. Once we take the sum of all of those, we are going to get our answer six. So now let me actually show you the efficient ways to solve this problem. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this problem. Both of the solutions are linear time solutions, right? So big O of N is going to be the time complexity of the solution. But the first solution I show you is going to actually require big O N of memory as well. There's an actual optimization you can do with two pointers to reduce the memory from linear memory, big O of N, to constant memory. So I'm going to show you both of the solutions and it's actually not a lot of code. The code is actually pretty easy. Since for every single position, right, to know how much water we can trap at index i, we need to know what's the max left and right height of every single position, right? So for this position, the max on the left is going to be 2 right over here, and the max on the right is going to be 3 right over here, right? So we're going to need to be doing that calculation a lot. So we can actually make an array and then store that calculation for us so that we only have to do it uh, a single time each. So first we can scan through the array, right? Just go iterate through the entire array, calculating every single max left position, meaning for this position, what's the max height on the left of it? Well, there aren't any heights on the left of it, so it's going to be zero. What's the max height of this? Well, the max height is zero, right? That's the only height that came before it. What's the max height on the left of this? Well, it's a one, right? So we can do this in linear time, big O of n time. So I'm just going to do that, right? What's the max height on the left of this? One, max height on the left of this. We have a new max, it's two, right? We just keep track of what the current max is so far. Right now it's two, two. We got a new height, a new maximum, that's three. So now three is going to be the max left height for the remainder of these, right? So we calculated the max left height. We can actually calculate the max right height pretty easily as well when we iterate through this in reverse order, right? We go from right to left. So initially the max right height is zero because there's nothing on the right of this. Next it's gonna be one, now it's gonna be two, and now we got to a three. So the max right height for the remainder of this is just gonna be three. And remember, we actually need to take the minimum of the max left and the max right for every single position, right? So for this position, we want the minimum of these two values. For this position, right, zero, we want the minimum of these two values, right? Because the minimum is going to help us determine how much water we can trap in this position, right? And clearly, we can actually find the minimum of these two arrays as well in linear time. So here, it's the minimum is 0, minimum is 0, minimum is 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 0. And so now for every single position, we're going to determine how much water we can trap. And we can do that, remember, with our calculation, we can take the minimum of the left and the right, and subtract from it the height at position i, right? And we're always going to round up. We always want it to be greater than or equal to zero. And then we can add the sum of all of those values and then get the total water that we can trap. So in this position, we have zero minus z zero minus zero, right? So here, the amount of water we can trap is zero. Here we have zero minus one. That's going to be negative one, but we don't count negative. So the amount of water we can trap here is zero. Here we have one minus zero, the height at this position, so we can actually trap one water in this position. Here we have one minus two, that's gonna be negative, so we can't trap any water here. Here we have two minus one, so that's gonna be one, that means we can trap one water here. This is two, so the maximum boundary is two, Minus zero, that means we can trap two units of water here. 
Next position, we have a two minus one. We can trap one water here. Here we have two minus three. That's gonna be negative. We can't trap any water here. This is gonna be two minus two. Again, zero water that we can trap here. Two minus one, that's one. So we can trap one unit of water here. Here we're gonna get one minus two. That's negative, can't trap any water here. Here we have zero minus one, that's also negative, so can't trap any water here, and that makes sense. Why would we be, why would we be able to trap water here when there's no right boundary? But okay, so we have all of our values. We take one plus one plus two plus one plus one, and we get exactly what we expected, right? We get a six, we can trap six units of water here. So this is the solution taking extra linear memory. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the O of one memory solution. It's still linear time, big O of n time, but this time we're not gonna need any of this extra memory that we just allocated. We're actually gonna do this. We're gonna do this with two pointers. So initially I'm gonna have my left pointer over here. I'm gonna have my right pointer here. So the right pointer is gonna be all the way at the end of the input array. So we're going to have our two pointers initialized. We're also going to have two variables, max left and max right, which are going to be keeping track of the maximum left pointer and maximum right pointer so far. So you can see left is initially zero. So the max so far on the left is zero. You can see right is initially one. So the max on the right so far is one. So now we are going to have to update our pointer. Now, which pointer are we going to shift? We're going to take the one that has the smaller max value. So right now you can see max left has zero, max right has one. So we're going to shift the smaller one, which is left. So we're going to take our left pointer and shift it. So now our left pointer is over here. And just, just a FYI, we know that we can't have any water stored on the endpoints, right? On the left and the right positions, we can't have any water because they're endpoints, right? They can't contain any water. But this position technically can have some water. And how are we gonna determine that? Well, we're gonna take our, how much water this can contain, right? We're gonna take the max left value that we have in our variable right now, right? How, how come we don't need the right value? Well, I'm gonna show you. So this is the part that you kind of need to notice the trick, I guess, right? So we're in this position, right? Now, remember originally we wanted the minimum down here. You can see we wanted the minimum of the max left and max right. Well, we know what the max left is so far, right? The max left is zero, right? That's what's over here. Now we technically don't know what the max right is, even though this variable says one, yes, so, so far it's one, but we know that the max right could actually be three, right? That's what the true max right is of this position, right? Because there's a three over here. So why is it that we don't need that value? Because remember, we want the minimum of the max left and the max right. Now we clearly know that the max left is zero, right? So it's smaller than what's even at this position, right? And we want the minimum of it. So no matter how big this value is, right? Right now it's a three, it could be a 10, right? It doesn't matter how big it is because we want the max of the left and the right. And we already know that the left is pretty small, right? It's, it's zero. So it doesn't matter what's in all of these values because we know that the max left is our bottleneck, right? Remember, we shifted our left pointer from here to the next position because left was smaller than right. That's why we shifted it. That's how we're able to calculate the water that's trapped in this position without knowing what the max right is. So with that being explained, let's actually go through this so we can get to the code. So what's the amount of water that we can trap over here? It's actually zero because the max left, which is the value that we need is zero, right? So zero minus what the actual height is in this position is one. We know that's gonna be a negative one. We don't count negative ones. So we're not gonna use that. So we're gonna say that zero water can be trapped here. But you can see, look, this is a one, right? Our left pointer is here. So we can actually update this. We can cross the, the zero out, max left, is now actually going to be one. 
So now we're actually at a dilemma, right? Because take a look, our max left and our max right are both one. So it doesn't really matter which one we shift. Let's just shift the left one again. So we're shifting our left pointer over here now, right? And since they're equal, this is going to be the bottleneck, which is left pointer and the max left and it's one so far. So no matter how big anything over here is, we know that one is gonna be the bottleneck. We're gonna do one, which is the max left pointer or the minimum of the max of the left and right pointers, right? So we're gonna take that one minus the value that's in this position, the height of the index I, which is zero. So that's gonna give us a water level that is one. So that means in this position, we can store one block of water. So basically I'm running through the algorithm with two pointers. So I'm just gonna quickly go through the rest of what this example would be. So again, we're gonna shift our left pointer because left and right are equal. So it doesn't matter which one we shift, we're shifting the left one over here. So now to calculate how much water would be stored here, we're gonna take the max left pointer which is one and subtract from it the height that's in this position two. That's clearly negative, negative one. So what we're gonna say is that zero water could be stored here. And so since we reached a height of two, that means we can update max left and set it to two now. So now remember, we wanna shift the minimum pointer and right now the minimum pointer is the, the right pointer, which is a max height of one. So we're gonna take our right pointer and shift it. And since we shift the, shifted the right pointer, now we have to calculate the height or the water that we can contain in this position, right? And so remember now the bottleneck, right, is going to be this. The max right height for this position is one, right? So it doesn't matter how big heights over here are, right? There's a three here, but we don't care about that because the max right height is one. And remember, we're taking the minimum of the max left and right height. So no matter what we do, that's always gonna be one for this position. So we're gonna take one minus the height in this position, which is two. That's obviously gonna be negative, so we don't have any water here. So we can say zero water here. And since this is a two, that means we can also update our max right height now to two. So this is gonna be set to two now. The max right height is two. And since they're now once again equal, they're both set to two, I'm going to be updating the left pointer because it doesn't really matter which one we do. Okay, so let's calculate the water in this position. So we're at a left position. So we're gonna take the max left height, which is two minus the height in this position, one. That's gonna give us a one, meaning that we can contain one unit of water. And the height in this position is one, so we don't update our max left height, but we can now shift our left pointer one more position. Now our left pointer is over here. Our max left height stayed the same, it's two, so let's compute the water we can store here. Two, which is you know the boundary, uh, subtracted by the level here, which is zero, so that's gonna give us two units of water that we can store here. So a two here, and let's shift our left pointer again because the max left and rights are equal. So now we're over here, what's the max left? It's still two minus the height in this position, which is one, that's gonna give us a one, so that means one unit of water can be stored here. Let's shift our left pointer again. Awesome, so now our left pointer is actually at a three. So what we're gonna do is two, which is the max left height, minus three, which is the height in this position, that's gonna give us a negative, right? So what that tells us is that we can't store any water here, that's a zero, right? But you can see our max left height can actually be updated now, right? It's gonna be set to three now. So this is a little bit messy, but let's just say our max left height is three. Right, and our max right height is still two. Remember, we're shifting the minimum height. So we're taking now the right height and shifting it. So now we can take, so we're at a, at a right position. We can take the max right, which is two, subtract it from the height in this position. Two minus one is gonna give us a one. That means we can store one unit of water here. Now let's shift our right pointer again because two is less than three. So now we're basically at the last position, right? So the, the max right height is two. 
the height in this position is two. So what we're gonna do is two minus two, that's gonna be zero, right? So we can't store any water here. That's gonna be a zero. And now you can see we filled in the, the water levels that we wanted, right? When you take this one plus one plus two plus one plus one, once again, you're gonna get the total six, right? Because six is the amount of water that we can store. I just show you, showed you now how to actually do it without any extra memory, right? We took away this big chunk of memory that we were using and we did it with two pointers. And if it doesn't make a ton of sense right now, it might make even more sense when you take a look at the code, which is actually shorter than you would expect. Let me show you that right now. So one short edge case we have to take care of is if not height, meaning the input is empty, we can return zero. This is needed for this problem. And just like in the explanation, I'm gonna initialize two pointers. Left is gonna be at the beginning, so index zero, and right is gonna be at the last index, so length of height minus one. I'm also gonna have two maxes, so the left max and the right max, which are initially gonna be set to height of the respective indices. So height of left, height of right. I'm also gonna have a result, which is gonna total the water for us. So I'm gonna run this loop while left is less than right. So before they meet each other. And remember, we're gonna decide which cell to compute and which pointer to shift depending on the comparison between the maxes. So if left max is less than right max, then we're gonna be shifting the left pointer. Otherwise, we're gonna shift the right pointer. So if left max is smaller, we're gonna increment left by one. In the opposite case, we're gonna decrement right by one. And remember, we're also gonna be updating the, the left max, right? So which so if we get to, let's say, compare left max with the current height at position left, right? So whichever is greater, we're gonna be updating the left max with that value. And we're gonna do similarly in the opposite case. So right max would also be updated to the max of itself and the new height that we get to height R. And remember, so in this case, right, we're gonna be taking the left max and then subtracting the height at the position I or the position L, right, at the left pointer position, right? So we're gonna be making this computation, right? And then we're gonna be adding that to the result, right? So this is gonna be added to the result. Now, notice how I'm not making any check to check that this is negative because technically this is never going to be negative. And uh, you can dig into that if you want. It's because I'm updating the left max here before I'm doing this computation. But if you were to swap the order of these two, you would uh, need to make sure that you're not adding a negative to the result. But that's just a minor detail that you can probably confirm on your own. The bulk of this is that you have to take the left max and then subtract it from the height at that current position, right? And so in the else condition, we're gonna be doing the opposite. We're gonna be adding to the result the difference between the right max and the height at the right pointer. So this is really what I was just doing in the picture, right? This probably makes it a little more clear because we actually have good uh, variable names and stuff. But yeah, after all this is done, the last thing that you have to do is just return the result. Let me just prove to you that it runs and runs efficiently. And you can see that it does exactly that. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. I showed you how to do this in linear time and constant memory complexity.